Farid and Nana Efua Bedway is a Ghanaian software engineer who was born in Nigeria. She is the co-founder of Logicel, a fintech company based in Ghana. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at the age of one. Her family moved to Ghana when she was nine years old and was homeschooled until 12 years. Farida Bedway has built mobile and enterprise applications and is also known for her knowledge of software architecture and deploying mobile services, particularly for banking applications. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause, please help me welcome Farida Nana Efwa Bedway. So I'd like to do a count of how many of you are in the position to to decide who gets into your school and who doesn't get into your school. So, <laughs> school owners, <laughs> head teachers, can I see by hand? The head teachers, the school owners, the. Global Super Teacher Conference, get informed, go perform, get informed, go perform. How many of you have, have admitted a child with a disability? A significant, um, I must say, the, the numbers are not encouraging. And I, I often he, he, hear this story from parents of children with disabilities that they go to the school and the, 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 the headmistress or the headmaster does not want to admit their child. They, they don't know what to do and all that. And for me, I always say, say that, look, I have a lot of people who tell me that, oh, they admire me, I'm, I'm such an inspiration, and all that stuff. But I'm in a position to make somebody else an inspiration by allowing the person access to education. So, 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 so if you don't do that, then you're causing you're not helping the problem. We have a big problem in this country of children with disabilities not being admitted into schools, not getting the same opportunities that I got because, because, because the, the education system isn't, isn't very receptive to, to them. And the government, I mean, let, let's, not, let's not even talk, talk about the government's role, <laughs> role in this thing, because honestly, I'm tired of talking about the government and what they should do and what they should be doing, because at the end of the day, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't force, for, for, force them to do what they, what they are supposed to do. But those of you in the private sector and those of you who are school heads, even, even within the government sector, and you have the power to decide that, okay, I will admit this child, I will give this child this opportunity. I think you, you, you owe it to, to, to society to do that. At least brighten the little corner of the, of, of, of the world where you are. And hopefully, it will have a ripple effect across the country. We, we, we can't so solve all Ghana's problem, but we can solve a, a small problem Within, within our jurisdiction, within our domain, and hopefully that, 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 that will ripple across the country. I, I am where I am because, because, partly because two head teachers gave me the opportunity. So, so that is a challenge that I'm throwing to, 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 you, to you today to give children the opportunity. So, so, so that there will be a lot more fabulous in, in Ghana. It's very important, very important. And that is the only reason why, why I come and I talk. It's not because of me, because whatever opportunity I want, right, I, I can get it. I don't need, I don't need any help from, from, from any educational sector or the government or anything. I'm talking so that other children will get, will get access to education. And inclusive education is something that I'm very passionate about. Because I always say that, look, I didn't go to any that bad school, as, as you call them, or, you know, the private schools and other stuff. I went to Saito. And I'm very happy that I went to Saito. And I went to Saito in the early 90s, 
before there was any thing like inclusive education. So, so back then, two headmistresses from, 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 from a government school were able to give me the opportunity. I don't see what other what schools you have now with all this emphasis on inclusive education and all that stuff. We have no reason not to, not to admit children with disabilities. If it is the facilities that you don't have, that is a different story. We can talk about it. If, if you need extra help from, from maybe medical professionals or you need, you, you need to build a ramp for something and you need funding for that, uh, explain to the parents that, look, uh, we would love to admit your child, but we don't have, have this and this for help. So maybe the, child, maybe the parents may be in a financial position to help you modify your school to, to fit those needs or, or, to, or to help you um, employ somebody to, to, to be with the child in the classroom or whatever. But don't just turn, 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 turn the, the child away completely because when you have a child with a disability, especially in, in this part of the world, you, you are basically helpless. There's nothing, I mean, you don't even know where to start because you, you, don't, you don't have any help from social services. You don't have any help from government institutions. You, I mean, it's basically, basically just you and your God, literally. So, so, so the little that, that those of you in the educational system can do to make things a bit easier for, for these parents, I think we, we, we owe to, to, to society, to making our society a more inclusive society to do it. Give you a bit of my background. I, I was homeschooled by my mother until I was t t 12 years old, and I, then at 12 years old, I went into mainstream school. Now, now I was born in 1979, so back then, I mean, there was, there, was, there was none of these facilities available. There was no internet. There was nothing like that. My, my mother read, had to read medical textbooks to be able to figure out how. how how to deal with, with my disability. Because the access to probation that, that we have now is only available then. So, 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 she, so she used to tell me that she would go to the hospital, her, her, her friends read, were, were a pediatrician, and she, she read all the books that she could on my condition to, to figure out a way of, of making me as, 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 as self-sufficient and, and as independent as she could possibly be. That, that, that was the sacrifice that she was willing to make. And, and right now, as you can see, she, she's reaping the results of that sacrifice. And, and it is up to you, parents of children with special needs, or not, not, or not even special needs, to be, to be able to make those sacrifices for your children. So, 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 so that when, when you're not around, you, 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 you're not worried. You know that, that they'll be able to survive and they were able to cope. Because that was her number one worry, that the way she's not around, who, who, who will be able to look after me the way she wants me to be looked after? So, so her main focus was to make me as independent as, as possible so that I'd be able to have the tools to be able to look after myself. Because at the end of the day, I, 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 I'm not a parent, but, but but I've been told that, that, that as a parent, the deep love that you have for your child, no, nobody can, can have it, it the way you do. So, 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 so let, let that love translate into, in, into, 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 into establishing your child so that he or she will be able to be self-sufficient and stand up for, 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 for themselves when you're not around. So as I said, I, um, I went into mainstream school for the first time. I, I, when I was 12, I went to, 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 to JSS. And I went to JSS in Kolegono. It, it doesn't get, 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 get more subtle than, than Kolegono. <laughs> and, and I loved it. I mean, I loved it because, because I was suddenly exposed to, to um, 
life and, and, and people who I was never who I never have been exposed to. And it made me appreciate my social economic standard. It, it made me appreciate that that, that I, I was privileged. But it also made, made me realize that children can be the best people in the world if they are not influenced by, by, by adult perception. Because they were very accepting, they, they were very helpful, they were very accommodating to the extent that, that sometimes when, when my mother is late to put me up from school, they, they would stay behind and wait for her to put me up before they went home from school. Because they didn't want me to, to, to be the only one left sitting there waiting for my mom. And these are children who, after school, they have to have chores to do. They probably have to go and uh, uh, help their mother sell in the market and all that stuff. But, but they were willing to, to make those, those sacrifices because, because, because they, they, they liked me and they took me as their friend. So when I hear stories about children, I mean, making fun, fun of children with disabilities and all those things, I'm like, this, this one is the adults who have poisoned their mind against these children. The adults have, have used preconceived notions and they, are, and, and they are telling them that, that these children are not, I mean, we hear all these, these horror stories of, of children with disabilities being left by the riverside to, to die and all that stuff, even, even in the year 2023, with, 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 with all the exposure and things we have, children with disabilities are still being killed. And, 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 it, and it's not just, just in some remote village, in Accra here, in Kumasi, in Tamale, in, in, in the cities which, which, which are supposed to be cosmopolitan and, and people should know better. No, children with disabilities are still being killed. So, so it's, about, it's about time we, we change our, our mindset and we change our, our perspective. And because we, we, we can't solve the whole, as I said earlier, we, we, can't, we, we can't solve all the problems, but we can solve a little problem by, 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 by influencing change within, within our communities. So, so if you know of, of any parent with a disability, or with a child with a disability, or, or, or even an adult with a disability, befriend the person, find out what, what the person is going through, talk to the person, and, and try and help, and help the person. It, it might not even be financial help that, that the person is, but, but especially for parents with of children with disabilities, where, where they, 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 they can't get, get, get people to, to help them with, with, with their children at all because of the stigma uh, around the, around disability. If you can, if you, you, you can even go to, to the parent and say that okay, I will I will sit with your child for for for, for two hours. You go and, and do your hair or, or go and, and relax a little. Believe me, that that is even worth more than 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 giving the person money because. Because the person needs, needs time to away to be able to regroup and spend time with themselves. So after after JHS, I went to the BC, and um, I, because of my disability, I, I had a problem with my handwriting. But um, if you were if if you were used to it, you could um, you, you could read it. So my, 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 my school teachers and then got used to my handwriting. But, but then when it came to, to, to the BC, BC my, my, my other were going to be marked by, by YX. And, and obviously the lecturers, the examiners of YX did not know <laughs> my handwriting. So what happened? My mother had to go to, to special education unit, go and see the minister for um, the social welfare, Back then, it, it was Mr. Diaz Barton. I don't know how many of you remember. Back in the, in the this, this was during PNDC, NDC. No, it, it was 93, so I think it, it was just after the, the first election. Yeah, so it was Mr. Diaz Barton, who, who was the Minister for Welfare. He referred her to special education. He went to special education, they referred her to exam council. 
then, then a young counselor sent, sent, sent somebody to my school to come and, uh, and inspect my books to see whether, whether it was legible or not. So one day they, they came to, to, to my school to look at my exercise books and they said, that, okay, my handwriting isn't that bad. So, so but, but they'll give me extra time during, during the examination and, um, and they'll put a note on my, on my exam papers so that, so, so that whoever is marking knows that I have this, these challenges. So I will not be marked down because of a bad handwriting and all that stuff. Back then, they, they were very strict to those things. I don't know how it is now, but, but, but back then, you, you could actually be marked down because you had bad handwriting. So, so I, I wrote the BC, I did very well. Um, I, 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 I could have gotten any, any of the schools that I wanted to get. And I, I didn't, uh, I remember I chose at motor school, I got it, but um, I couldn't go to a motor school. Why? Because in 1994 and in 2023, a motor school is still not not disability funny. And and it's sad to say this that after 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 almost 30 years, nothing has changed when it comes to secondary schools in Ghana. So. So it was, it, was, it was decided that I should go and do a computer diploma. So after, after JSS, I went and did a computer diploma. Then I got a job working for, for one of the top software companies in Ghana. And that is how I started my, my career. Then, but then, um, so after that, I am... Um, I, 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 while, while working, I, 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 I was doing another diploma in IT. Then uh, after that, I, I had two diplomas. I didn't have a degree. I wanted a degree. So I, uh, I applied. A lot of my teaching university had just started. So I, I applied to them. And, and I, I got in. But then I also applied to another university in the UK. And I also got, got, got admission there. But, but the difference between Ashashi and 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 that in the UK was that university in the UK gave me final year admission. I only based, based on my work experience and, and, and my knowledge about the, the industry. So I went straight, straight in the final year and did, did one year and graduated with a BSc in computer science. Then I, I came back and I, and I continued working and yeah, my, my career has, has taken many, many forms. I've been an, 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 an entrepreneur, I've gone back into the corporate world now. Right now I work for Microsoft as a software engineer and so yeah. But, um, but, but all this, all this, all this couldn't have happened if, if I didn't have access to education. So a lot relies on, on, on you guys, and I hope that that I'm not just talking in vain, because as, as I told people, I've stopped talking because I'm tired of talking and nothing getting done. So, so, so it's taking a lot from me to decide to come and talk today, because I feel as if over the years I've, I've been on many radio programs, TV programs, Spoken about inclusive, spoken about about the rights of people with disabilities, and I don't see the change being affected. So I just decided to stop talking and, and, and start being selfish and, and, and thinking about myself and, and my life, and not worrying about about the community. But then, but then, when, when you have this thing in you, there, there's only so much selfishness that you can that you can that you can adhere to. <laughs> So I hope, I hope um, it, it's my wish that that um, whatever it is that I have said has planted some seeds in, in in all of you, and hopefully maybe next year or next two years 
the next time I meet you and I ask you how many children with disabilities you have within your organization, I will see more, more promising numbers than what, than what I have. Thank you and God bless you. Wow, I think she deserves a stunning ovation. Come on, put your hands together. Let's appreciate this. Let's appreciate this. Let's appreciate this. Let's appreciate this. For more information, just call 026-271-4106. The Global Super Teachers Conference. Get informed. Go perform. This conference is brought to you by Africa Education Gateway, Pearson Edexcel, Glossnet, School World Events, NAPS, Access Bank, Ghana, and Ghana Olympiad Academy. It's the Global Super Teachers Conference. Get informed. Go perform.